In the mid-90s, quantum physics redefined the way we view the universe, changing the face of science forever. Interestingly, some of the major theories proposed by quantum physics were not entirely new. 2,000 years before, some of these ideas already existed in ancient belief systems of the East. In particular, some core beliefs of Buddhism share unmistakable parallels with quantum physics. In this video, we will be highlighting some of these parallel views shared between quantum physics and Buddhism. We begin with the idea of emptiness in Buddhist philosophy. In Buddhism, emptiness can be seen as that from which all arises and returns to. Buddha affirmed that reality itself arises from emptiness. He describes emptiness as a non-dual and an infinite source, a field of potential from which any possibility comes from. This idea is paralleled in quantum physics, in a concept known as the quantum field. So what is the quantum field? The quantum field is basically an electromagnetic field from which all matter materializes. Get it? Think of the quantum field as an iceberg. We only see the tip of the iceberg, and in this case, that's our observable reality. However, there is still a huge iceberg hiding underneath the ocean. This is similar to the possible range of perception and potential matter that sits deep in the quantum field. Basically, the whole cast of Ice Age could be living under that iceberg, and we wouldn't know because it's not in our observable reality. Scientifically speaking, therefore, it means that all matter, which makes up our reality, rises from and returns to this field. This makes the quantum field a continuous medium spread across time and space, like a projection that shines out of our observable reality. So how does this relate to the Buddhist ideology of emptiness? To answer this, we have to look closely at what makes up our observable reality, matter. Our observable reality, also known as matter, exhibits a dual nature. It exists as both a wave, which is in the non-material form, and as a particle, which is in the material form. This phenomenon is captured in a concept in quantum physics called wave-particle duality. The experiment that confirms this has been repeated a thousand times, with the same results so much so that the wave-particle duality of matter is now considered a fact. What makes this fact interesting to our reality is that the particle quality of matter can only be defined by the mind that perceives it. Hence, when our conscious mind perceives solid matter, it is only observing one aspect of that matter's reality. Once you flip the switch and consider that solid object as a wave, you instantly cannot define the same object by a specific space or time. Rather, it can only be understood as being everywhere in the entire universe. With this in mind, let's look at the composition of an atom, the primary building block of matter. An atom is 99.9% .9 empty space. That means that all the solid objects around us, the chair you're sitting on, the device you're watching this video on, are all made of mostly empty space. So when people say, he's got an empty head, technically, they're not lying. Why then do these solids feel solid to touch if they are mostly made of hollow space? The reason matter feels solid is because these atoms are constantly pushing away from each other like magnets of the same polarity. Therefore, what really holds all matter together is the presence of a fluctuating energy around the atoms. In fact, Albert Einstein says, matter can therefore be regarded as being constituted by the regions of space in which the field is extremely intense. He went further to say, there's no place in this new kind of physics for both field and matter, for a field is the only reality. If the quantum field is where all matter arises and returns to, and matter itself is composed predominantly of empty space, then really, as the Buddhist idea of emptiness goes, reality itself arises and returns from sheer emptiness. This idea of emptiness is also related to Buddha's philosophy of mind and reality. According to Buddhism, the mind is the center of reality. The mind is seen to have created the reality we view around us, very similar to the way your mind creates your dreams, and alcohol creates hallucinations. One of the fathers of quantum physics, Max Planck, seems to echo this philosophy in a statement where he proclaims, the mind is the matrix of all matter. Now, the Buddhist view on mind and reality is open to interpretation. But it is quite clear that there is a striking parallel that exists between this philosophy and quantum physics. Heisenberg, one of the key pioneers of quantum mechanics, had this to say. What we observe as nature is not nature itself, but nature exposed to our method of questioning. 
In other words, what we observe as our reality is only what our lens of observation has defined. For example, through our method of questioning, we've realized that poo is bad for us. However, flies would contest that theory greatly because their lens of observation tells a different story. This conclusion was arrived at following the double slip experiment designed to test the speed of light. In this test, Heisenberg observed the particles that were thought to be solid behaved like waves. But what was striking was, was that this behavior was dependent on whether or not these particles were being observed. When not observed, supposed particles took up wave like behavior, demonstrating a state of infinite potential. However, when observed, the particles took up well defined locations, acting as solid matter. In other words, they just flipped the switch. This weird behavior is clearly mirrored in the Buddhist explanation of mind reality, which explains that what you see is only a result of what you think. In other words, our perception defines our reality. Finally, there exists another parallel between Buddhism's philosophy of oneness and a phenomenon in quantum physics. In Buddhism, oneness is the idea that everything in the universe is interconnected. Therefore, the idea of being separate from the matter we can see around us is considered an illusion. This point of view is mirrored in a phenomenon in wave mechanics called quantum entanglement. This relationship connects both particles so that whatever happens to one particle is reflected by the other particle instantaneously, irrespective of time and space. If we journey back to the singularity before the Big Bang, it is not difficult to see how particles could have undergone quantum entanglement in that state. When the entire universe was compressed into what was smaller than an atom, remember the quantum field. It is a sea of energy that connects all life energy and matter into one single system. This implies that everything we see and experience has one single interconnected source. This is a far complex truth of the universe simply captured in the Buddhist belief that everything in the universe is interconnected, like the wires of your earbuds. Buddhist monks may not be the most scientifically advanced people around today, but it appears that what we hold today as revolutionary ways of viewing the universe is no news to these Buddhists who have studied these things for millennia. If you enjoyed this video, let us know by clicking the thumbs up down below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification. That way you'll never miss any of our new films. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.